Is speaking in tongues for all people, or is it only for a chosen few? 1 Corinthians 12, it says, do all speak in tongues? Do all prophesy? Do all have uh, work miracles? No, they don't all. And so I don't feel guilt for not having it. I feel like I'm submitting to my Father in heaven. I don't think praying in the Holy Spirit means praying in tongues. That's probably why it came to my mind. I think it means being in sync with the Holy Spirit in the way you pray. But I thought of tongues. And I said, I haven't asked for tongues for a long time. And so I just paused. I'm, I'm walking back and forth in my living room. Nobody, Tal is up in her room. Noel's at the gym. And I said, Lord, I'm still eager to speak in tongues. Would you give me that gift? Now, at that point, you can try to say banana backwards if you want to. <laughs> I used to sit in the car outside church singing in tongues. But I knew I wasn't. I was just making it up. And I said, this isn't it. I know this isn't it. But this is what they try to get you to do if, if you're in that certain group. And I, I just, I did everything to try to open myself to this and, and the Lord has always said to me without words, no, <laughs> no. But, but he... The Bible says in the book of Acts, in Peter's first sermon, when God filled with the Holy Spirit and he spoke in tongues, Jesus called it the promise of the Father in Acts chapter 1, the promise of God. But in chapter 2, when Peter is preaching unto the the masses of people, he tells them that the, the gift is for everyone. It, it says, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It says in Acts 2.38 and in Acts 2.39 it says, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So clearly, the promise of the Father, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, what Jesus spoke about in chapter 1 of Acts, that you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me uh, in, Jude in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and, and unto the uttermost part of the world. This promise of the Father that Jesus spoke about, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, uh, is what Peter was preaching and saying that it is for all. As we were witnessing in a local park, talking to people about Jesus, I met a, a couple. The man was a Baptist minister. And we, as we talked about salvation, we were in agreement. But as we talked about the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues, he said that he thought that theologically things were wrong when, when we taught that the baptism of the Holy Spirit was for everyone. And that everyone should speak in tongues. Now note this. He told me that he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. but And his wife was too. And they spoke in tongues. But they did not believe that everyone should speak in tongues. And so I asked him why. And he said because the Bible says that do all speak in tongues. And, and the gift of tongues is not for everyone. I said show me. And he tried to show me uh, 1 Corinthians 12.10. But I pointed out and I said, it doesn't say just tongues, the gift of tongues. It says to another, diverse kinds of tongues, and to another, the interpretation of tongues. So here clearly, Paul is not talking about just speaking in tongues. He's talking about different kinds of tongues that need interpretation from others or from the person speaking in tongues. You see, the, the private language of speaking in tongues for a person who's baptized we can just pray in the Spirit all day long. But if we want to interpret, all we have to do is ask the Lord to give us interpretation. Um, I look at what tongues are in the Scriptures, and I don't see them anywhere today. What I see in the Scriptures as being tongues, and I compare that to, to people who say they speak in tongues, I see something completely different. So see, I, I, some people are cessationist. That means they believe tongues have ceased. I kind of call myself a practical cessationist in the sense that I do not say those things have ceased. I've seen God heal people. You know, but have I seen a man who had the gift of healing? No. 
Have I, have I, here's what I think. I, I believe tongues in the book of Acts, every time it occurs, it is a, it is a real phonetic language. It is. It's a real phonetic language. And uh, those are the only examples of tongues we have. And they're real phonetic languages. And when they occurred, everybody knew something supernatural was going on. I mean, if I just sit here and repeat over and over, I think she wrote a Honda. I think she wrote a Honda. <laughs> There's nothing supernatural about that. That is the difference with all of this. That's why 1 Corinthians 12.30 says, Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? That is in continuation of 1 Corinthians 12.10. So clearly Paul is not talking about that uh, some people do not speak in tongues. No, he's not talking about the promise of the Father or the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He's simply teaching that not all have the gift of diverse kinds of tongues.